Thank you, Mr. Jackson. I'd now like to examine your heart, please. Could I ask you to undress to your waist and please take your shoes and socks off? Thank you. So please come to the couch. As Mr. Jackson is getting onto the couch, I'm looking for any signs of discomfort. I'm looking to see any ease of movement and whether he's breathless. I then stand back and have a look at the patient as a whole. I'm checking for any obvious abnormalities such as discomfort at rest, tachypnea, pallor, cyanosis, scars, or items of note around the bedside such as intravenous infusions that might be present on a ward. Look how Mr. Jackson is positioned. He's reclined at 45 degrees, his hands are by his side, and his chest is fully exposed. For female patients, after initial inspection, it is usually customary to cover their chest until their precordium is examined. Please have a look at your hands. Thank you. In the hands, I'm looking for signs of clubbing, peripheral cyanosis, cigarette tar staining, or splinter hemorrhages. This should only take a very short period of time before moving on to examine the radial pulse. I'd like to feel your pulse now, please. When examining the radial pulse, it is important to identify both the rate and the rhythm, and also allow at least 15 seconds to provide a good estimate of the patient's pulse rate. Thank you. Please may have both your hands. By examining both the radial pulses, I'm able to identify any evidence of radial, radial delay. Thank you. If I suspect aortic regurgitation, then I examine for a collapsing pulse. Initially examining the radial pulse by the patient's side, after warning them, I'll briskly raise his arm above his head. So I'm just going to raise your arm above your head. Thank you. Next, I examine for the brachial pulses. May I have your arm, please, sir? I'm just going to examine for the pulse. Thank you. This gives further insight into the volume and the character of the pulse. The brachial pulse is located medial to the biceps at the cubital fossa. Thank you. I'd just like to examine your other arm, please. Thank you. I'd just like to measure your blood pressure in your right arm, please. It is important to examine the patient's blood pressure at this point. On the first occasion, the blood pressure should be measured in both the right and left arm. And of course, the blood pressure should be measured standing if the patient is at risk of postural hypotension. Examination of the face may reveal a malar flush, which is characteristic of mitral valve disease. This is known as a mitral facies. I'd like to examine your face now, please, sir. Can I ask you to take your glasses off? Please look up for me. Examination of the conjunctiva may reveal evidence of anemia. The iris may show an arcus. And around the eyes, there may be evidence of xanthalasma. Can you please put your glasses back on? Can I ask you to open your mouth? And stick out your tongue, please. Thank you. It is essential to examine the mouth in a patient as poor dentition can be a source of bacterial endocarditis. 
Cyanosis will be evident from blue discoloration of the mucosa. I'd like to examine the vein in your neck, please. Can you rest your head back and look to the left? Back then. Lovely, thank you. The internal jugular vein arises between the two heads of the stenocodomastoid, the medial and the lateral heads. If the JVP is elevated, then it can be measured as the vertical height from the sternal angle. It's normally equal to or less than three centimetres. Eliciting the hepatojugular reflux is normally unnecessary. Both of the carotid pulses should be palpated, but be sure to only feel one at a time to prevent the patient feeling faint. Please relax your head back. I'd just like to feel the pulses in your neck. The examination of the precordium is like any other examination and thus should include inspection, palpation and auscultation. Noting for the cardiac examination, percussion of the heart is not required. At this point, you must ensure that the chest is fully exposed. I'd just like to look at the front of your chest, please. Can I ask you to put your arms by the side? Thank you. Excuse me. It is important to inspect for previous operative scars, for visible apical pulsation, and listen for an audible click of prosthetic heart valves. The apex is normally located at the fifth intercostal space, left midclavicular line, unless displaced by enlargement. As well as any displacement, the character of the apex beat is noted. If the apex beat is hard to locate, you can ask the patient to roll to their left, but you will no longer be able to comment on the position of the apex. I'm now going to feel for your heart. Excuse me. And I'll just check its location. Palpation with the base of my hand, just left of the sternum, might identify a parasternal heave which would indicate right ventricular hypertrophy. Palpating over the valvular areas might identify the presence of a thrill. Auscultation of the heart should start at the apex. It is important to identify the first and second heart sounds, then the additional sounds, S3 or S4, and then any murmurs. There are a number of strategies for auscultating the heart and it is likely you'll develop your own way of doing this. However, it is orthodox to start at the apex and proceed towards the base of the heart. If you need to time the murmurs, then palpate the carotid artery. A pulsation will indicate systole. I'd now like to listen to your heart, please. Excuse me. At first, using the diaphragm, I listen over the apex for the first, second, and any additional heart sounds. This area is ideal for listening for murmurs of mitral valve disease. I then proceed to listen at the axilla. This is an ideal area for listening for the radiation of mitral regurgitation. I then, by using the bell, listen over the apex again. I'm listening for the low-pitched murmur of mitral stenosis. This murmur can be accentuated by asking the patient to move to their left. Can you move to your left, please? Thank you. And again, rest back. I then proceed to the examination again by listening with the diaphragm at the lower left sternal edge. In the second intercostal space on the left, the pulmonary area. And the second intercostal space on the right, the aortic area. Murmurs of aortic stenosis often radiate to the base of the neck and sometimes be best heard in this location. It's important to listen uh, for crossed breweries. And this can be done in turn in the left and then the right by asking the patient to hold their breath. Can you hold your breath, please? Thank you. Thank you, and breathe normally. I often hold my breath at the same time as the patient as a way of reminding me to ask the patient to breathe again. Can I ask you to sit forward, please? 
to complete my examination of the precordium, I listened at the left lower sternal edge for the early diastolic murmur of aortic cogitation. This is best heard in expiration. Could you actually take a, breath, a breath in, and then breathe out, and hold your breath, please. Thank you, and breathe again. While the patient remains in this position, it is possible to listen at the lung bases for any evidence of pulmonary edema. Please remember, all left-sided heart murmurs are accentuated if a patient holds their breath in expiration, and right-sided heart murmurs are accentuated if a patient holds their breath in inspiration. Part of the cardiovascular examination includes examination of the rest of the peripheral pulses. It is important to examine for both the dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibial pulses in all patients. I'd like to examine the pulses in your feet, please. Firstly, I feel for the dorsalis pedis pulses, and then the posterior tibial pulses. Finally, both ankles should be inspected for peripheral edema. Sometimes edema can be tender, so warn the patient before applying any pressure. I'm now going to press behind your ankles. I usually press for about five seconds behind the medium alveolus, and then feel if any indentation remains afterwards. If pitting edema is present, identify the extent of the edema up the limbs. If a patient is bedbound, look at the lowest point of gravity, the sacrum. In right heart failure, there may be an indication for examination of the abdomen for evidence of ascites or hepatosplenomegaly. In addition, patients with vascular disease require a full vascular examination, including identification of any abdominal aortic aneurysm. For those patients with a history of uncontrolled hypertension, occasionally renal bruise can be heard in auscultation indicating renovascular disease. Examination of the eyes by fundoscopy is desirable in those patients with a history of diabetes, hypertension or endocarditis. Bedside investigations would include recording of the temperature and urine analysis.